Welcome in, race fans, to another edition of In the Dirt. This is Webb Dillard, and I didn't do jack doo doo over the weekend, except watch basketball. And my wife let me, and she watched with me. We uh, we watched basketball until there was no basketball to watch. And I loved it. I think just a lot of places down here got rained down. Though the icebreaker, the icebreaker uh, went off without a hitch. They had uh, Dennis Herb take home the the victory there. And the icebreaker was, I mean, how that one got off, there's snow everywhere. Snowing about 20 or 30 miles north of me. That damn uh, groundhog was full of crap. Well, all right. Well, without further ado... And Bobby Pierce will be on the pole for the icebreaker, Webb. <laughs> well, I didn't know. Yeah, he already did that, didn't he? Yeah, he. I just watched him uh, outrun Daryl Lanigan by like half a track. Well, speaking of Bobby Pierce, he, he'll be joining us on the program tonight. Ah, that's good. I'm sitting here playing catch-up. I'm in the middle of watching my uh, heat races on Dirt on Dirt since I had no chance at all to uh, get to a TV and watch. It's a great thing about being able to go back online and uh, catch up on everything. But that's what I'm supposed to do uh, before we have the show, right? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I have, well, the the schedule I keep, you know, I'm always gone. So I didn't have any races to go to this weekend, Um, amazingly enough. And I didn't do nothing. Didn't log on to Dirt on Dirt. Well, I mean, I did kind of keep a half an eye on what was going on in Indiana with the the icebreaker. But my attention was with the uh, March Madness and basketball. What? What? How, are you for real? <laughs> Listen, dude, I ain't gonna lie to you. I was, I'm a I'm a sports fan. Other, I like racing. Is my, is, is number one. Is number one. But. I, I, I mean, I love basketball and football, too. I've learned to love college football, especially living with the uh, diehard Alabama fan I live with now, my wife. But, I mean, I'm a Hoosier. I'm from Indiana. We like basketball. Basketball and racing is what Hoosiers do. They got a tire yeah. named after us. I, yeah, that's true. And, and I shouldn't I shouldn't even knock you for that because I am a little upset with, with the racing uh, situation anyway. All right. Well, what, what is your beef with the racing situation? Well... I'm just, I think I'm, uh, you know how one day you just wake up and you see how it is and you're just depressed? Well, I did notice, I did notice your uh, post about NASCAR on Facebook. Nah, it's a waste. It's, I don't know. I guess I'm one of those guys that's just stuck in the past and wants everything to be like it was back then. Is it, but I mean, honestly, is that really that bad? Of, I mean, is it that bad? I didn't watch it. it was, I watched zero of the race. Zero. I can't watch it because there's nothing. It's there's. I don't know. I I can't even pinpoint what it was that drew me to uh, the sport of of stock car racing. I I can't even. It, maybe I just was born, you know, loving it, and then all of a sudden it's it's changed so dramatically that I can't stand it. Well, I mean, change, that's what, I mean, that's what, uh, that, that's why you have your voice in, on this show. You're supposed to change it, make it Well, better. I think what it was, I think what the big thing was is that when I was, when I was growing up in my younger days, there were guys that you could look up to. They were heroes. Um, you felt like you had a chance to attain the dream, and now you just realize there's no way for you to attain the dream. That it's just not possible to just well, have talent and make it. Here's the, here's the funny thing about dreams. And now and now I'll get the people that say I'm saying that I have talent. I'm just saying it's not possible. It, it, there was a time. I believe that there was a time that the guy, a guy, could 
get a group of guys together and they could be intelligent and work hard and build a car and take it to the racetrack and, and try their hand at making a, a race. And now it's just not that way. You don't you don't build your car and get your buddies together and work really hard and get really good at, at your job and go to a racetrack and, and make a show anymore. Now you have to buy your car, um, buy your crew, buy your information, and then buy your starting spot in a race. And it's heartbreaking. Well, and I'm maybe... Just, I, I hope that's not the road we're going down with this. Well, no, you're already there. I mean, we're already there. That's where, and and I don't mean to to beat this drum. I mean, we're talking. This is a, the conversation is leading down the road where I got to bring up. I got to bring up Neesmith. Neesmith, you're on a level playing field. If you are a better setup man in Neesmith, you're gonna your car your car's gonna handle better. Go to the front versus it's all about handling and driving. But when you when you put all the stuff under the hood and you know, you have all that horsepower to, to correct mistakes or whatever. It takes it out of the driver's hand. It's more about the motor. Am I wrong? It's more about the motor. Well, now, I, I, I don't know. Because I still am a firm believer that those tires, no matter how wide they are, won't accept the maximum amount of power that these guys can make with these engines nowadays. I've never seen Jimmy Owens or... Scott Bloomquist or Daryl Lanigan be able to go out and flat foot a car all the way around the racetrack. Well, I, well, what I'm saying is you can spend every guy can spend the same amount of money in what in what we're doing in the Neesmith series and be on a level playing field with the next guy. I mean, because when you when you had Don, I mean Donnie O came down, Don O'Neill came down to um, Ocala early on. Early oh, I, in, in I, I know what you're I know what you're saying there. The the engine part of it definitely. Is a uh, is a regulator. I would I would agree with that. Um, but I just I don't know. I'm just bad depressed. I think I need to go get some Prozac. <laughs> is there a, is there a doctor out there that would prescribe like Prozac for racers? I don't does does uh who makes that Eli Lilly Pfizer who makes. Maybe we get a sponsor. We should, maybe, we, maybe we could get them to sponsor me a ride. Say, hey, I'll try your Prozac for race car drivers. Or or maybe maybe we need like um an anti racing addiction drug. No, we don't want to do that. Certainly don't want to do that. Well why not? We we do everything else that's gonna screw the sport up. Why not do that? Yeah, well, I mean, there's some um, there's some good things going on in the sport. I mean, it's still like you know we you go to the the race tracks are are still open. Mm-hmm. Um, we got we got guests coming on here in just a few minutes. Uh, John Kennedy started that the new uh, National Dirt Racing League. I believe that's the uh, the acronym. So there's some there's some things going on. It's uh, but you're talking with what you got going on and what you see. Now, what are your goals? Oh, I'm not. I'm not talking about me. I'm just talking about you know. You were talking about the post, and I was just telling you where I was coming from with it. Yeah. And and I I just and I just hope that that's not where we're headed. Um, but I'm afraid that there are some powers that be that that would rather it be that way. I just have that feeling. Well, well, sometimes you have to alter. Um, what your goals might be according to what the world's given you, or and, start a revolution, or start a revolution. <laughs> yeah, start a revolution. Well, all right. Well, it's, it's ten after, and let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and start with our first guest. Um, I want to welcome Mr. John Kennedy to the program. Mr. Kennedy, are you with us? I'm with you, John. You guys. Uh, have your inaugural events upcoming this weekend. Um, tell us a little bit about what's going on at uh, Paducah and Peebley uh, Speedways. Uh, thanks, yeah, and thanks for having me on. Well, we're we're real excited about the upcoming weekend and, and hope that uh, Mother Nature holds out for us. But um, we've got a couple of big special events coming up. Um, Friday night we're at uh, Paducah International Raceway, and uh, Saturday night we're at I-55 
uh, Raceway Federated Auto Parts, I-55 Raceway there in Peebley. And um, we've got a couple of uh, uh, late model special events that are going to pay 20000 to the winner and 1500 to the to the uh, to start the show. And and it uh, starts off our, we've got a little five-race mini-series set up. It starts off our points racing, and, and the winner of the points will uh, – I get twenty thousand dollars over those five shows, and, and tenth place pays two thousand. And um, they're special events as well. We've we've teamed with Cody McCarver. He's formerly of the Confederate Railroad and, and, and quite a performer. So he's going to put on a show at each one of our events. And and uh, we also have uh, the gentleman that does the um, the fireworks shows at, at, at events like the Dream and the World and the Firecracker. He's going to be there to to do a show for the fans and the families um, that are there. And, and then uh, another little bit of news that we have that, that uh, we uh, we lined up um, at the end of last week there is we have the Country Network, TCN, um, who's going to be there to film on um, both days to put together a couple of uh, one-hour programs on that network. And they're in about um, 43 different homes. 43 million different homes across the country, so we'll have uh, TCN there as well. So it's going to be quite an event. Well, most people know, if you're, if you're a fan of Dirt Lake Models, that you're the uh, car owner, the team owner for um, Shane Clanton and uh, Tim Fuller. What made you want to leap from just being a, a owner of a successful team to promoting a, a mini series of sorts? Well, it's... You know, racing something that I've something that I've been passionate about. I've been around it my whole life. When I was a kid, my dad used to build race cars when when they built their own uh, frame and everything, and and he kind of got out of it, and and then um, I got away from it a little bit, and then uh, three years ago I decided to start up a late model team, and we've been you know little by little building on that, and and now I feel pretty fortunate. We've got uh, Shane Clanton and Tim Fuller racing for us both. Uh, uh, excellent drivers and well respected in the late model community, and and uh, they're following the World of Outlaws tour this year. But I've really been trying to figure out a way to be more active in the business that I'm so passionate about, and and just do more. And and I thought about doing some manufacturing stuff or, or this or that, and and this seemed like a really fun way to uh, do something that I could engage race teams and the fans and and uh, work with my guys, so that's kind of how it all came about. It's just a little bit something more I can do in the industry. Well, and, and it seemed like, if you just talking about the team, it seems like it's come together rather well because, you know, the Capital Race Car started hitting. Shane parks it in victory lane at the Dream. I mean, you got, and then Fuller had the early season success, and then, of course, Clinton's doing well, too, this season. Um is it a combination of everything, or is it, is it the capital car coming around? Is it the drivers? Is it, is it what, what do you attest, what do you guys um, where do you where does the blame lie for the recent success? You know, I think it's a combination of things. Those those guys work awful hard. Shane and his crew, and and Tim and his crew, and and you know even the guys leading up to to you know Shane coming on board. Um, you know early on I had Dick Barton um, race for me and John Lobb and. And, uh, you know, they're, they were part of the, the, the success of the team. And, and we've just been able to build a little bit and grow a little bit each year. And, and we have some, some very trusted and respected folks in the industry, too. We have, um, you know, obviously Kaiser and, and Scott Kaiser and his group uh, help us out a bunch. And, and Gary Winger with our, with our shock program. Marshall Green uh, with Capital Race Cars has been a huge asset as we try to to make these cars better. Um, so there, it, it just really takes, um, I, I have to say, it's all about relationships and, and, and good teamwork to, to get things where they are. Well, I know the Capital, the capital Race Car, is, is it was a, a work in progress for the first year and a half, I think, before, well, before they hooked up with you guys. And now with uh, guys like Craig Reese in the Southeast, also... Uh, Casey Roberts and a few other guys, and then, I mean, do you are you are you getting good information from different from the different tracks? I mean, because they your guys see all the tracks in the country, but then you got these guys back home closer to Marshall. How does that help you when you get information from Reese and uh, Casey Roberts? Do you guys get a lot of information from those guys? Yeah, we sure do. It's it's been great having more guys on our cars, and 
you know, Pat Dorr joined down um, during the off season and bought a couple, and Ron Davies has one, and and uh, Craig Reese has been excellent in his great car, and, and Casey Roberts on the East Coast are phenomenal, and they all share information, and that just helps us grow our notebook quicker. I, I mean, if you look at some of the the cars we compete against, um, from the the Rockets to the Bloomquist to the the Masters and and uh, the victory circles, those guys have been building notebooks for an awful long time. And uh, um, any anybody we can collaborate with and share information with just helps get our notebook that much better. And that's been a big deal the last year or so. Well, look, I got I got a question for you, John. Wait, this is Brian Gray, my co-host. How's it going, John? Hey. We- what are Great what are your guys' long term plans for the for the mini series? I mean, is it going to go beyond what you have right now? Are there plans to build it beyond that point? You know, I, I, we're we're certainly um, wanting to continue doing what we're doing. Um, you know, very deliberate that we didn't compete with Lucas and, and World of Outlaws for obvious reasons. We want those talented drivers at our shows also. Um, we actually have stepped out and expanded it um, already yet this year. We've um, we've taken a, a Northeast Regional Series under our wing and, and plan to put some time and resources and staff behind that to help it grow to what it could be and and um, hope that works out really well for us. There's about 20, 20 or 25 schedules on, on their slate for this year, and, and – um, you know, we're going to keep it kind of status quo as far as purses and, and how they run their program this year because it's so close to season. But, but next year we'll probably change that up a, a little bit. And even for their regional deal, the, the minimum uh, purse to win will probably be $5,000 and stuff and just, just make it a little bit more special for the, the racers and fans. Um, so we've, we've grown that way already. But um, I, I can see us doing something similar next year. And I know you said you didn't you didn't want to compete with with Lucas or or the World of Outlaws, but but my question would be well, why wouldn't you? I, I, mean, I, I understand the need to to want to draw guys like Bloomquist and and people like that, but they're really really good local guys. Um, why wouldn't you put your time and effort into those guys, especially the ones that have some kind of personality? I mean, I think I think that's what people want to come to see. They don't always come, you know, to just see Scott Bloomquist. I, I think if Scott Bloomquist didn't make the World 100, it wouldn't make it a non-crown jewel event. I just don't think that you add, people think that we need those guys, and I just don't think that we do need those guys. I think there's enough talent and enough personality on a local level. I don't know why somebody's not going out there and taking that to the bank. Well, uh, and uh, let me interrupt real quick. Uh, and they, there are people doing it, Brian. I mean, you got Nice Miss series, you got all the SRS, you got different series that do that. Right, but what we were saying is that he was saying he didn't want to compete with Lucas or the World yeah. of Outlaws, and if, if that's exactly who I would want to be competing with. Well, I think this stems, stems from John. Like a lot of people, we'll talk to people and come on the show, and they'll say something about crown jewels. Obviously, you guys are making crown jewels, is what you're doing, and that's awesome. We love that. The I love the fact that you're making your own crown jewels. Um, we have to, uh, there's, so there's a certain pop per, part of the population that talks about the crown jewels, um, all being bought up by one entity. Um, with you making some, that's, right. You make new that's, ones. That's, that's you're making new ones. That's counter that. So it, it, does that come into play with the NDRL? Well, um, there's a lot of, a lot of questions and back and forth there. You know, first I'd, I'd like to say that. Well, we're trying to do some some uh, special, you know, events that have great purses and, and great attendance and and um, really make them special. Um, I I don't think that a crown jewel is made in in a single event. So um, while our goal would eventually be to have some crown jewels on our slate, um, you know, I don't think what we're doing can be considered that simply because. Um, you, you think of the other crown jewels, there's a tremendous amount of tradition and history behind those. And, and you know, like over time, obviously, hopefully we get there. But, um, you know, that said, um, you know, we do want as many local and regional racers to race with us. And, and um, 
you know, what would be really neat, and, and there's there's some great guys out there doing some regional stuff. Uh, Ray Cook um, expanded from his, what he was doing to a spring nationals thing, too, which I think is awesome. And yeah, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Finest, he's probably one of the finest gentlemen in racing, both as a competitor, and a, a, he runs a track, and he promotes the series. And I'd hope to be able to collaborate with somebody like Ray, and, and I've got my Northeast thing, and, and then we we pull together and we have like a North meets South thing, or, or maybe even do something in the Midwest along this line. So, you know, certainly there's room in the market to make, um, uh, better shows for the, the local and regional racers. Um, and that's part of our plan. John, that's, that's really cool. So that, so there's a lot more thought into just the, I mean, to expand this into something. Yeah. See, Brian, that was a, that was a good answer. Right. Sure. Thank you. But I, I'm just I'm just going from if from a fan from a fan standpoint. Now, now I'm I'm more of a racer probably than a fan. When my my attendance at a racetrack is typically me there racing. But I I, I talk to so many people, um, and and I have to make a point to do that because because of what we do with. And there's there's a thing that that is missing. and It's a key part um, from the series standpoint. Is that let's take for instance, um, let's say the World 100 was a series event. All right, this is hypothetical. The World 100 can be uh, promoted as you know the biggest dirt late model race of the year, and and it doesn't matter wh- anything else beyond that. Everybody knows that all the top drivers are going to be there. But people come there to see the drivers. They don't come there to see this big display of oh, we're paying this much to win. I wish that the series would get back to promoting those drivers to, I mean, there's no storyline when you go to the racetrack anymore, Webb. There's, there's nothing. You you show up there and you watch a bunch of guys race and half the time you don't even know who they are. Well, we, we certainly won't have that problem with these races. John, before we let you get out of here, I, I want to tell everybody that NDRL Kings of Dirt, uh, the website is, uh, the the ndrl dot com one word the ndrl dot com the first two events are this this weekend Paducah International Raceway Federated Auto Racing Parts Raceway at uh, I fifty five in Peebley you guys have a hell of a field uh, stacking up uh, dirt on dirt is also going to be up there covering it I wish I got the assignment because I'm a dirt on dirt guy they're sending me out to uh, Carolinas <laughs> <laughs> well we'd have been happy to have you there as well well. What we want to do is we want to keep tabs on everything you guys are doing, and um, every time there's an event coming up, we'd like to have you back on and just uh, tell us, or, or, or your PR guy or whoever. Um, but we certainly wish you luck with the uh, race team. Uh, Shane Clanton and Fuller both have been on the program. We're big fans of both those guys. And, of course, Marshall Green and the Capital Race Car. Before we let you get out here, is there any sponsors you'd like to thank uh, to get the, to have gotten this NDRL deal together for you? Yeah, you know, we're we're real proud to have some some great sponsors lining up with us. Uh, we have VP Racing Fuels, we have Hoosier, we have American Racer Tires, we have um, uh, Scott Kaiser and, and Integra Shocks came on board. We have uh, Genesis Shocks, um, Brown and Miller Racing Solutions, um, uh, uh, Responsible Racers, which they try to promote a message of um, racers um, driving responsibly. Uh, after the races and not having uh, a bunch of uh, beer in their system. So they're part of our program. We're real happy with that. So um, Slavic has jumped on board and, and is, is officially one of our sponsors, helping us with all of our promotional stuff. So um, we've got some great sponsors. I hope I didn't miss any of them or at least not too many of them, but there's there's a pretty pretty big list and it's grown daily. So real happy with all those folks and, and – um, Look forward to a great season, and I appreciate all your support, and I'll be more than happy to come on your show anytime. Not a problem. That's the National Dirt Racing League. It's set to kick off this weekend. Uh, go check them out at theNDRL.com. And, uh, John, thank you very much, and we'll talk to you down the road, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. All right, let's just keep the show going. Let's uh, let's bring on our next guest. Uh, this is a buddy of mine. Uh, we've done several things together. Mr. Cody McCarver. How you doing, man? Man, what is up? I'm just sitting here listening to you guys, enjoying this good conversation. Well, Mr. In, in, Mr. Cody McCarver, the singer? Yes. Yeah, well, or what's left of him? <laughs> <laughs> now, 
Now, you, I just want... you haven't been on the road long enough to have left pieces of you behind, have you? Well, about 20 years. Yeah, yeah. He's, a road, he's a road warrior. I've been I've been doing this since I uh, actually I, I when I graduated high school I went to to college for a year on a basketball shop scholarship. I should have been kicked every day probably for not continuing that, uh, but I got the, the fire of music in me and um, I took off with both uh, both feet and planted very unfirmly and. Uh, <laughs> Went out on the road and spent a lot of time doing it. I, I think in 1995, I did 290 nights. So uh, I've, I've got a, like when I say what's left of him, this is what's left of it. Now, you, you are, you're involved with the NDRL um, deal through uh, Kennedy, um, and our buddy Craig Reese got you guys involved. In, uh, but first of all, um, what... What is your involvement with the dirt track racing? I mean, anybody on Facebook, if you're in the dirt racing community, certainly have uh, have heard uh, Cody McCarver's "Let's Get Dirty." But the "Let's Get Dirty" is a uh, is about racing. Uh, talk to us about what makes you so passionate about um, your music and then involving the motorsports fans, the dirt motorsports fans specifically. Well, you know the the way the whole thing went down for me was, is of course I've always been a fan of racing. Um, as a kid growing up, a big fan of um, of motorcycle racing. I always had bikes, but um, a big fan of dirt track racing, just any kind of racing, horse racing, whatever. You know, we used to go out where I live and, and race on Saturday night growing up. So um, I met Craig Reese, uh, who you've mentioned a couple of times, a couple of years ago, and we got to talking, and I ended up helping sponsor Craig's car and uh, got really involved. Um, I didn't really know. Uh, how much I would end up being involved. When I initially started working with Craig, I did I didn't really see uh, this much, you know, future in it. It was a it was a marketing opportunity to market the brand to Cody McCart, and that's kind of how I looked at it. And uh, Craig's a great soul. Uh, there's nobody who works harder than the guy. I mean, he's just on the phone constantly doing something for a sponsor or an interview or trying to get sponsors, just whatever he's got to do to keep his career afloat, he does. And I'm that same kind of guy. So we uh, we really hit it off, and uh, it went from me sponsoring Craig's car to doing interviews with, with folks like you uh, to, you know, getting called. I, I, after I wrote the song Let's Get Dirty, which the way I look at, at, at dirt track racing and not trying to say anything bad about any other types of race, and there's a little more of a heart there to it than uh, I see in other forms of racing. And I well, like that heart needs a big you know, shot of cocaine. I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, we don't. Endorse, <laughs> we well, we certainly don't endorse the use of cocaine, but we got the we got. The, I'm just saying, <laughs> if we had enough to inject into some dirt track racing, it'd be a lot better right now, Webb. Well, but, uh, yeah, fair enough. And I sat down and. Uh, I wrote the song "Let's Get Dirty," and he's and on. He, Cody's been on the road, so he knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, Fair no. enough. Uh, but I wrote the song "Let's Get Dirty" just with the intentions. If you know what, I'm gonna write a song and try to highlight these these guys and gals out there racing in the dirt world. You know, and I I was blown away by the response of it, and. I, you know, I'm smart enough to know what I'm doing. I talked to Marshall, you know, about the song and uh, different ideas that uh, that I had for it. Along the way, I got a call from uh, a guy named Tom Stout who was doing a movie called L.A. Dirt, uh, starring Michael Rourke, who we now see in um, The Following on television with Kevin Bacon. He was in the movie Magic Mike, which was about those male strippers. I've never seen it, but he's in it. And... Uh, the dolphin tales and a lot of different things. And I was invited to come and be in this movie called LA dirt, where I would play Cody McCarver and sing let's get dirty, which the movie is set around dirt track racing. So that led from one thing to shows at tracks. And along the way, you know, uh, I got a call from John, uh, Craig had bought a vehicle from, from John and John and I got to talking and he started to explain to me about, you know, what he was going to try to do with the NDRL. And John is, first and foremost, a race fan. And I like that. And I like his work ethic and his honesty and his go-get-it go get, it, go get it attitude. 
and uh, he understands, you know, there's ways to grow and there's ways to not grow in the marketing aspect of the whole thing. So I jumped in and probably, if you just ask John, Cody's probably went, you know, above and beyond the Call of Duty because I'm, I'm got a lot of faith in what he is doing and the dirt track racing work. So uh, I, I've just become uh, a little more involved in it along the way. I was up doing a show this weekend for uh, at a, the Chevy Museum in uh, Decatur, Illinois, for uh, Bob Sargent at uh, Mickens Speedway. So we're kind of all over the place right now. Of course, looking forward to performing at Patuka on a Saturday, and um, then on or on Friday, I'm sorry, and then uh, up in Beverly, Missouri, on Saturday. So I'm I'm hoping for uh, big things. Uh, not only for the NDRL in, in this world, but for racing in general and for, for uh, Cody McCarver. Well, and Let's Get Dirty is a, is a, is a pretty good theme. I mean, it's a, it, it, uh, it speaks, kind of has that, it's a, it's a, and, and musically speaking, it's a gritty song. It's that, uh, it's a deep, kind of a soulful deal. Um, says all the right things as far as what we feel in race, uh, in dirt track racing specifically. Um, What's some of the things some of the fans have said to you? I mean, I know you like you just said you performed at Macon, but you're you're the type that gets out and talks to the fans. Every time I've been around you, you try to get out and talk to the fans. What are the fans saying about uh, the music you're providing for them and, and how it fits to the uh, to the, the mold of dirt track races and, and the fans? Well, first and foremost, man, I, if you know me, you, I got a streak of redneck in me about a mile wide. <laughs> And uh, the other, the other nope. mile or half mile is what I'd probably call outlaw country music. I'm a, I'm a hero. My heroes are Waylon Jennings and David Allen Coe. And, and there we go. God bless one of their souls, and God rest his soul. And the other one just had a, a mean, nasty uh, wreck, and I know you know him. And tell him I said, get well. Hey man, he is. A, he's out of the hospital now, and uh, uh, is doing better, and is at home, and. Is, I don't know if anybody saw that man. Uh, say a prayer for David Allen Cole and be glad uh, he he evidently got somebody upstairs watching over him because of that vehicle. If you saw it, there's a million reasons that he's not dead, um, or a million wonders he's not dead, and only one reason he's probably still alive. <laughs> somebody was looking over him, but that that kind of music is what I like, and that's what I grew up on. And number one, I think that most of the race fans out there be it. NASCAR, be it dirt racing, whatever, they're country music fans for the most part. And uh, so I think I, I kind of got something to say to them that they want to hear musically and uh, or they're at least willing to listen to. Uh, maybe that that's more of a better way of putting it. Uh, at least listen to what i got to say. And let's get dirty is, um, is one thing that I keep getting so many people walking up to me at shows, whether it's at a, a club or at a fair or festival or whatever theater or track and going man it sure is good to have somebody finally pony up and say something good about us you know or about dirt track racing and i'm sure there's been other people do it um i uh, but i get a lot of credit for writing uh, a pretty good song and uh and glad that folks are enjoying it and everybody's glad that somebody's actually doing something for uh for the racers you know well that's right well where can everybody find uh, find your uh, music at? Where can they buy that? Well, man, any, if anybody sitting with a cell phone in their hand can uh, can buy it off iTunes or Amazon or Rhapsody, any of the places that you normally would get your music, be it an Android or, or an iTunes. Uh, if you want to buy a physical CD, you can get it offline anywhere, and then the album that has Let's Get Dirty on it will start to shelf uh, probably sometime around late April, 1st of May, where then you can buy it at stores. Uh so but for the time being, if you want to see the video, it's on YouTube, uh, cmt.com. Uh, we've got a whole lot of great things going on. And one of the things that's really going on that I think is going to be a great thing, um, John, when I was listening to John Kennedy talk a minute ago, uh, he mentioned this. But the uh, in Nashville, if you're in the country music business and you're, you're a country music fan, you've got CMT, Country Music Television. You have CMT Pure, which is... Basically, their digital cable networks. They're 55 million homes. Got, I uh, have three number one videos on that network, and then you got GAC and you got TCN, the Country Network. Uh, the Country Network's in 43 million homes. And uh, three weeks ago, uh, uh, two and a half weeks ago, 
uh, I sat down and had a meeting with a Kerry Roth, who's the head of uh, TCN. And I told him, I said, you know, I got this song called Let's Get Dirty, and we're doing some shows with the NDRL, and uh, we got a lot of cool things going on. And I don't know if this is anything that would be good for your network or or not. I don't know, but I wanted to throw it at you, see what you think. And uh, ironically, the head of this television network that's in 43 million homes pulls out his cell phone and proceeds to show me photos of himself at track. Huh. Uh, one, one of the tracks is him and his daddy in Chino, California at a track. Uh, another one's Clarksville, Tennessee. He's been to a few times, and he's a big avid dirt track racing fan and knew the drivers and literally gear ratios of the cars. And he tells me that he would refuses to do a bona fide reality TV series on his network because it's about country music, but he wants to find an intersection, was his exact words. So our intersection is is a country music slash dirt track racing show called Let's Get Dirty, and uh, it's going to be part reality where he's going to show the drivers as serious competitors, as serious drivers, uh, and, and how real it is for them to be out there wanting to win a race. And we're, we start filming the pilot uh, we, this, this coming weekend in Paducah and then up in Peely, Missouri again on Saturday. So if you do come to those races and you see five cameras running around with lights and sound and me holding a microphone, you know what's going on. I, I, I think that I'm actually a good guy to narrate that uh, TV show. So if they're looking for a narrator, tell me you want me to read for it. <laughs> Man, you got it because right now they're asking me to do it. I would. And he don't. And you don't want to do it. No, it's not that I don't want to do it. I'm actually looking forward to it. Uh, one of the things that they want me to do uh, in this scenario is is that you know they're going to be uh, at Paducah, and they're going to be showing the drivers driving. They may do some interviews with the drivers, uh, show the you know the the real behind the scenes footage of uh, of dirt track racing. And at some point in time, it comes back to me, and I say, hey, y'all, I'm Cody McCarver. We're getting ready to go to commercial break. While we're going to commercial break, check out the brand-new video from Tim McGraw or whatever artist, right? And so that's the intersection of reality and country music because we keep good country music videos oh, that okay, fit gotcha. the dirt yeah, track gotcha. theme, and we keep the reality of racing in there, too. So you're going to be like the, the Waylon Jennings of the uh, like Dukes of Hazards. You're going to be like that voice before, after they're jumping the bridge. You're going, hey, y'all don't go nowhere. Check out this video. Hey, you know what? That's a pretty good idea. <laughs> I hadn't really thought of that one, but maybe we should talk after your show. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but all hey. right, well, we'll, cu- we'll, cu- well, go ahead, Brian. Go ahead, Brian. I'm sorry. Web, you're a creator. That's all I was saying. I'm an idea guy. That's what I, that's what I yeah. do. I'm, a, I'm an idea guy. Man, that's what I am, an idea guy. And you know what's bad for us idea guys is sometimes we don't get paid enough for it, do we? You're, hey, no. hey, listen, there's you a bunch of... give it away. There's a bunch of cuss words. <laughs> there's like a bunch of cuss words I like to agree with you using. <laughs> I know that's a fact. But anyway, Cody. It, uh, it's just like this one This one time I was having a conversation with a friend of mine, and I said I happened to mention, because, see, I'm a big music fan too, Cody. Um, right. And I tell him, you know, they ask me about how, you know, things things go, things happen, whatever. And I look at this guy, I said, well, I got Merle to blame and Hank to thank for turning my life around. And you want to guess what? That bo- that man went and wrote a song about that. Well, that happens, man. you got to be careful. Uh, well, I don't know and you, I don't mind did it. Did you make I, I any was, money off of it? That's the question. I was, I was flattered. Well, they don't charge me to go to shows. <laughs> well, there you go. At least you got something. Out there, right? <laughs> so, the, 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 uh, you know, the, it's a uh, it's a it's a slim world out there when it comes to that because you can say things and people pick up on it. I'm the world's worst about not picking up on things. You could have said that to me, and I, I probably would have went right over my head. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, I've got I got a million of them, but but I, I will tell you one thing: when uh, Mr. George Jones passes away, I'm going to make a fortune off of this song. Well, don't tell I've me already that. got, I've already got it written. I got it written. You know, George Jones in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I've been we, uh, uh, for all the folks that don't know, I was part of the Bank and Federal Railroad for a lot of years, and uh, we did a bunch of shows with George. So, uh, I've been gone from railroad a year and a half or so, and I two years almost, and I uh, 
George came to uh, Chattanooga and played the Memorial Auditorium and uh, Friday night, and uh, we went and saw George and and got to hang out with the band again. It's been a while since I saw him, and that was uh, quite a treat. I do believe it probably. I, I've heard them say George's last tour. Uh, I believe this is probably it. Uh, you think he's? You think he's really done? I would think, yeah. After yeah. you know being around everybody, and uh, they're supposed to do one grand finale show in November in Nashville. Well, you there's know what? Six artists on it right now, from Sandy Lauper to you know the Merle Haggard probably, and there's a bunch of uh, there. I think this is going to be his final final tour. So if you hadn't seen him, and you got a chance to. You might want. You know what he's going to need after the tour. What's that? He's going to need a rocking chair, Jared Tall, and the Medicare. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the cool things that was part but of he's going to tell you he battery. don't need it. But he yeah, well, it. you're exactly right. Eventually, he will. But when we did, uh, when we were doing Confederate Railroad shows with him, I got to go out there and uh, if you have ever heard the song "Rocking Chair," you know how he's got all the different artists singing background. Uh, yeah. I actually got to go out on stage and do that and sing those background parts. And uh, that was kind of a, I was talking about a treat for my career and my life. That was something else. I well, hear you, bro. Anytime you get to grace the stage with your heroes, it, it it means something. Oh, it does. You know, it's uh, it's something. And uh, with a uh, like the John Kennedy called, and you know, I, I love racing, and I always wanted to go more. But with the shows that we do, you know, as artists, musicians, and you travel. Hey, you play on your most of your shows are on Fridays and Saturday nights, you know, and so the races that you could go to and attend, you really can't go to a race because you're always out singing somewhere. And so, you know, I didn't get to go see Craig race, even though I was working with Craig Reese because I was traveling. And when John called and said, "Hey, we want you to play races," and I was like, "You mean I get to sing and watch a race?" <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Man, you don't have to ask me twice." I mean, that's right. So uh, I'm 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 looking forward to that. We're gonna do a pre-race concert in Paducah and then when we're done we'll uh, sell some merchandise and find some things and then I get to sit down and watch the race. That's what I'm talking about. I don't get to watch races. I got to work at them. But, well, Cody, uh, have fun this weekend. Thank you very much for what you guys do for racing and um, being a, you're an ambassador now and, and I've a, my motto is if, if we all take ownership of this thing and leave it better than what we found it, and racing is going to be around for, for everybody to enjoy, our kids and our grandkids. So thank you for being an ambassador of sport and taking time and talk to us tonight. And, uh, hey, keep in touch. on We talk on Facebook a bunch. Keep in touch. Remember, I get to come on stage somewhere with you and play. Hey, man, I ain't forgot it. I was just about to say the same thing back to you. I promised you I'd do that. I, and listen, we're going to do it. And for all the folks that are listening, if you're close to Paducah or Peasley, come out this weekend, man, if you – I tell everybody, if you don't like racing, maybe you'll like con- you'll like the concert. If you don't like the concert, maybe you'll like the race. But if, if you all like- that fails, if you want to be in a reality TV show, <laughs> come and be in one with us. Uh, we're going <laughs> to we're going to be filming for ten hours each day, you know. So there's a pretty good chance of you being in a reality t- TV show with us, and uh, we need all the people there to support that that we can and support the racers and the music. And one of the things I do love about what Kennedy's vision is is that his vision is, this is, uh, you know, number one, I'm a race fan, this is about racing. But that don't mean that this can't be an event for everybody, you know. And uh, I love that idea, and I I love it most of all because he's included me in it. (laughs) (laughs) That's right, that's right. Well, we certainly appreciate taking time out of your evening to to come on In the Dirt, and uh, you're welcome here anytime. And, uh, of course, we're going to keep up with the NDRL and Cody McCarver. uh, So I appreciate it, brother. Yeah, man, so let's get dirty. All right, let's get dirty. Cody McCarver, take him out, check him out on Facebook. I'm sure he'll accept your friendship. And also uh, look for Let's Get Dirty online, and you can purchase the uh, the, C- the CD. That's going to be a good deal. I, I, I really think that the, that that concept, and it's something I've always believed in, Brian, about having sh- sh- show, more of a show at the racetrack. You know, we got to entertain people. Because we're competing with more these days, it ain't like the '60s or '70s. I've always wondered why that's not why that wasn't a regular thing. We, I've tried it when and I worked at Green Valley Speedway. I, I, I booked some bands on a, a couple of different occasions. Right, and, and you know what? The, the, there is a difference between if you're booking bands, and I'm not saying that you didn't do the right thing with, but 
it, it is it really is hard to find to find really good entertainment. I I understand that, but you they've got to do something. They got to do more. You know, like 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 we were talking earlier when I said that something when I was younger there was something about being at the racetrack. Um, that it's that stuff right there. It's stuff like that that's missing now. Well, let's uh, move on to the program. Um, we've actually talked about having this guy on several times, but let's welcome uh, Bobby Pierce to the program. We just never really got it hooked up. Bobby, welcome to the program, brother. Hey, what's up? So now you you guys are you guys are finding some traction here early in the season. You, you guys set fast time over the weekend. Uh, what's 2013 been like for you so far? Uh, well. Like you said, I mean, we've had a great start uh, down in Florida, you know. Um, this is my third time going down there. Um, first time I went down there, I didn't make any of the races at East Bay. And then uh, second year, I made um, I made nine races. And then this year, I made 11 of the 12 races. So, you know, I just keep uh, progressing. And uh, I did, um, I, let's see here, I came out of um, East Bay. I believe third in Lucas Oil points, and after Brownstown, I'm in fourth place now. And um, just to pick up those uh, two fast time awards, one at East Bay and one at Brownstown, that's a, that's a pretty cool thing to do, you know, because uh, I always wanted to get a fast time with the Lucas Oil or World of Outlaw, either one. That's a pretty cool accomplishment. And uh, yeah, like you said, I mean, we just we've had a pretty good start, you know. Um, my family, we've been working really hard and getting this car hooked up. Now I was in Volusia and I, I was uh, working with the uh, Dirt on Dirt uh, pay per view crew, and I was in the infield there. And I noticed you had a, a a crew member that was down there with you who may be fam- familiar to everybody listening. But wasn't his name Tyler? Tyler um, Reddy. Where, where was this at? <laughs> at oh, Volusia. East Bay. Yeah. No. Uh, well, oh, no, Volusia? Volusia. Yeah. Oh yeah. T- <laughs> yeah, Tyler. Uh, me and him are pretty good buddies. <laughs> Well, I seen the guy, and I thought I, I, he was. I was trying to work, but I people around me always try to see who's around me just because I need to get a shot or whatever. And I noticed it was Tyler, and I said, "Well, I wonder what he's doing." And then uh, this guy turned around, and it was your dad. And I go, "Hey, Tyler's a jack man this weekend. What is, <laughs> what, was he down there just helping y'all? Uh, what's the relationship like when he's there helping?" Oh uh, well, I don't remember uh, exactly what happened, but I know he wasn't racing that uh, specific night. Uh, he raced uh, a couple of the other nights down there, but um, I don't know. Um, I guess he just came over. You know, he had um, he's just uh, not racing that night, like I said. And I guess he was uh, helping us out. Now, it's just it's neat. So, of course, you see all the veterans you guys race against. I mean, Bloomquist, all I mean, O'Neill, all these guys. But um, what do you and Tyler talk about when it when uh, when you're at the racetrack together? And you see all these guys. What do you are you in all of any of the guys that you race against? Uh, well, um, the way I, I sort of look at it is, um, you're only, uh, you, you have the capabilities to do anything that the big dogs can do. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not doubting my dad's cars. I mean, like, I think my dad has a great car, you know, so that's a plus there. And then, um, you know, I mean, I've been racing since I was eight, um, so I got, eight years of experience and this will be my fourth year in a super late mile. And I mean, that's, that's more than some get some, uh, have already. And, um, you know, I mean, me and him, we just, uh, take one race at a time and, um, sort of look at it that way. You know, I mean, we can do anything that, um, they can do. And on the racetrack, you're, you're all the same size. <laughs> yeah. Or well, does, 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 now your dad obviously a legend. I mean, everybody knows him and his accomplishments. Does he put any? Uh, is there any extra pressure on you because of uh, who your dad is? Oh no! I mean, uh, I um, try try to do my best to fill in his shoes. Um, you know, I mean, we go to all these tracks and it's uh, it's I think it's really fun. You know, I mean, as a family, we go to these tracks and um, we all kitchen, you know, doing stuff, whether it's working on the car or as my sister, you know, she's a crew chief, um, between just taking lap times, you know, and, um, there's not really any pressure, I would say, um, you know, we, 
go out there and do it for fun. And, um, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a career that's fun, but yet it's also serious, but no, I mean, there's no pressure really. Now you guys have been involved in a, um, in a, uh, sponsorship. Um, I don't, I don't know what, what do you call, but, uh, champion spark plugs has put on a, uh, a uh, sort of an American Idol, I guess, so uh, voting for a sponsorship. <laughs> yeah. um, how did you guys get involved in the uh, – did, did you just apply to that? Did they come to you? How did you get involved with this champion deal? Oh, uh, well, you know, I just saw it on the Internet one day. Um, it's just this contest where, like, you make a two-minute video of yourself, like what you do, what you raise, um, like it, why you should earn this champion spark plug sponsorship stuff like that you know and um i mean one day we just went out in the shop and um filmed some stuff with uh like we didn't have a professional do it or anything like that we just did it ourselves and um you know we sent in the video and here we are um my fans have been voting for me yesterday was actually the last day to vote for me and um i made it to the final 15 and now, actually, I'm just waiting on to hear who won the fifty thousand. Uh, so, I mean, you've been like on the campaign trail. I've seen, I've seen several spots. Well, you and Jason Fager was, was the only two late. Was that the only two late model guys? You and Fager? Oh uh, yeah, there's uh, me and Jason. I know there's like a sprint car guy in there, um, a midget guy. There's a lot of um, asphalt drivers in there too. Well, uh, we got a question. They from still one race on that. What's that? They still race on asphalt. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that there was any races happening on asphalt. Yeah. I don't know how asphalt guys can even apply. Yeah, I, I thought that was a, it, they, that's an extinct form of racing. That can, uh, we all think, but a listener has a question. Um, well, they want to know how you keep up with uh, all your guys' schoolwork. Uh, you and your sister. Um, oh man, being, being in school that's, still. Yeah, that's a little tough. You know, when I uh, go down to Florida for two weeks, I try to get all the work I can, but it's just, like, impossible to get it all. So I got to, like, make it all up when I get back, you know. And um, it's it's going to get really tough uh, if I do this Lucas Oil deal or not. But um, I, I like to do it. And if I would, I'd almost have to maybe look at homeschooling or something like that, you know, because, it, yeah, it gets really tough. I can imagine. Uh, now, you it's, guys... It's got to be... It, it has to be... Make you feel really good knowing that you, you've got your dad there at all the all the races. Um, I mean, what's it, what's it like having a guy like that to go to that you can just talk to him and he understands what, uh, what goes on with the cars? I mean, that has to be a big advantage. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm appreciative to have him there. You know, um, he does a great job of setting up the car and... Um, like that's uh we're a team. I have my mind set on driving the car, you know, focusing on the track, what it's doing, all that stuff while he's um in the pits there working on it and making sure I got one of the best cars out there. But yeah, he's a he's he's a wonderful help. So I wouldn't be able to be here without him. <laughs> go going back to like one of the first times that that you that you got in the car, if you can think back to then. What was the biggest thing that he told you? What was the most important thing on his mind the first time he sat you in one of those cars? You know, that's <laughs> that's a really hard question because what he likes to do is he likes to cram 30 years into your brain at one time. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great answer. <laughs> so there's no specific answer for that one. <laughs> So no, really. So your so does your dad ever get aggravated? And 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 do you look at him and say, look, 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 pops, you got thirty some years. I've got four. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he gets uh pretty pretty aggravated. Um, <laughs> like uh, last night at Brownstown, um, you know, I got fast time, won the heat, and then he's like, all right, go out there and do your best. Whatever happens, just have fun. And then when I come in fifth place he's like why didn't you do this why don't you do that but it's uh he's just trying to make me better <laughs> that's great listen <laughs> you just listen i want you to look at him next time he's giving you an earful and say dad do you want me just to jump the concession stand now just ask, <laughs> just and that way it'll stop him in his tracks he'll be like what'd you just <laughs> so anyway <Yeah. laughs> hey 
Real quick, I want to let you know that one of your sponsors, uh, Alan Bradley, uh, with Schaefer Oils, listening. He said he's proud. He's proud of you. He's doing a good, great job in your interview. Um, looking forward, you guys. Obviously, are, you guys are in going to be in the hunt for. Are you going to chase the Rookie of the Year, Lucas? Oh, you know, um, I, I had a pretty good night at uh, Brownstown. Uh, I'm fourth in points right now, and we were deciding on what we're going to do. I'm we'll see how next weekend goes, you know, and. Um, most likely, I'd say we might be going down to Mississippi, but I think it'd be a really cool deal to do. You know, I mean, you got, like, if you're in the hunt and points, you get um, the money, like, tow money, and that's a good deal because it that money goes a long way with getting to all the tracks and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, I I think we're we're looking at it pretty hard, you know. All right, well, last question. Who on the tour do you want to pass coming out of four for a win? Doesn't matter how much money, just a checker flag. Who do you want to pass coming out of turn number four the most to get a win? Ooh, man. Uh, I don't know. I'd probably just have to go with a legend, uh, Scott Bloomquist, probably. <laughs> All right, hang on. Would you, you put go? the bumper to him? Track hero with the- I knew you were going to say that, so I had to play the song. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Well, all right. Well, before we let you get hold out on, he, oh. he didn't answer the question. If, oh, go ahead. If you had to put the bumper to him, would you do it? Ooh. Uh, well, what race are we talking about here? <laughs> the dream. It don't matter. Just the dream. Him in the ass. <laughs> the dream. Oh, uh, yeah. I'd probably have to give him a nudge. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, all right. Well, Bobby, thank you very much. I hope you had fun uh, on In the Dirt. Um, to, and I, I think I spoke to your mom earlier. Tell us that thank you for helping get that thing, everything hooked up so we could do this. We'd like to have you back on sometime for sure. But uh, thank all the sponsors on the race car um, and um, the crew members that help out. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, my family, like I said earlier, my mom, dad, sister, all of them, and, of course, my sponsors, uh, the new sponsor, Champion Spark Plugs. Um since I got the final into the final fifteen, uh, the Pierce Posse, um, Murphy Trucking, Peterson Aluminum, American Metal Supply, Advanced Shocks. Corey, he does a great job at with the shocks and stuff like that. And uh, Pro Power, um, all those guys, they do a great job. And um, I'm hoping to see you guys at Paducah and Peavey. I I won't get to make it to Paducah or Peavey. I will be at uh, Jackson and Kilgore, so I'm hoping to see you down there because you said that's what you guys wanted to do, and I'll be sure yep. to come by and talk to y'all. All right, Bobby Pierce, you catch him on the uh, hopefully catch him all year on the Lucas uh, Oil uh, Late Model Series. So good luck and be careful on the road, brother. All right, thank you. Out. All right, let's keep the thing moving. Hey, that that was a good interview. That was a great interview. That was one of our better ones, dude. Oh yeah. I, I wonder if his dad. I wonder if his dad's ever told, got down there in the car and said, "Now, start of this race, you just put that bumper right on that guy right there, and just drive him down in the infield. <laughs> just drive him straight down into the. Con- I want you to jump the concession stand. I want you and land to drive him through the concession stand. You hear me? <laughs> We're putting a drive-through window in here. All right, well, let's keep moving on. But hey, I, hey, the dream. He said he would wreck Bloomy. That's all right. Hey, absolutely. That's that's great. Uh, I think if I I think if I had the chance to pass Bloomer off a of four in at any race, I'm putting a bumper <laughs> to him regardless. In hot laps. <laughs> and, no, not in hot laps. It has to. It, I, I'm I'm smarter than that, Webb. I, I know no, no. you have to make it through the first heat race. No, I would. I'm the. T- I'm not a very good driver, probably. I would wreck whoever it was in hot laps. So whether it be you, unintentionally. Or just, yeah, unintentionally, I would just <laughs> run out of talent. Why? Well, yeah. We we've 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 spoke about the uh, races coming up in uh, for the NDRL, but also I want to welcome now my buddy Cody Summer. He's the promoter for the uh, Carolina Crown that's upcoming this weekend. The one I'll be covering for Dirt on Dirt. Cody, welcome to the program, brother. You are a hard man to get a hold of. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. I appreciate you guys doing this, and I'm glad to be back on the show. I think the last time I was on was last year. This time, so that's right. Um, now, you guys. Uh, you know, last year, uh, you know, uh, from from start to finish of uh, promoting the show through the end of everything, I mean, you, you did about perfect with as, as much attention as you guys got. 
Yeah, uh, the, the race definitely got a lot of attention, uh, which <laughs> that was one thing we accomplished. Uh, there's quite a bit of controversy. The beginning, the um, beginning of Tiregate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had a couple people uh, tell me that it's probably the most controversial tire scenario that's ever happened in the sport. So I guess, you know what, if I'm ever known for anything, I guess it's that. So Okay, I've I've got to ask this question then. It's been a year later. I'm sure that I'm sure that you've learned a tremendous amount um from that situation. Give us the full breakdown. Is that going to happen again this year? Well, let me start with saying what happened last year because obviously, you know, I haven't been on the air with you guys to to air that out and frankly, I haven't been on the air with a lot of people to air that out except for maybe dirt on dirt, but actually spoke to Michael about this earlier today. And last year when I went into that race, uh, you know, I made it very clear with it being as big of a race as it was that tire games were going to be uncalled for and I was going to be watching them. And I made a lot of threats because, frankly, there was a lot of people worried about it. I had a lot of drivers call me concerned, so I had to. And um, I was willing to do whatever it took. Obviously, I was willing to disqualify a complete Cinderella story, you know, take twenty grand away from somebody and disqualify them. The, the issue is, is the laboratory that we were using did not have the most recent benchmark for the American racer. And, uh, you know, that blame could be put on a lot of different people, but at the end of the day, that that's he said, she said, I'll take the blame. Um, the benchmark wasn't up to date, even though I asked for the final, final uh, test. And when I was told it, it uh, didn't check out two or three times, I basically made the phone call and, and at that point made Jared Landers the winner. Um, it was at that point that my phone started ringing from the folks at American Racer and uh, so on and so forth. And I had to look at um, basically everything that was being given to me. And a lot of promoters wouldn't have took the time to really look at it and understand it. But, you know, Richie Lewis even called me and said, yeah, you know, indeed, American Racer just changed their tire in February. So this was March. This was a month later. They had just changed their tire. The labs didn't have the most recent benchmark. So basically it was just, it was a mistake. It just, it turned into a really big mistake because, you know, I disqualified the winner. And yeah. uh, at the end of the day, I did what was right. And what yeah. was right is Scott Autry won that race, and he won it fair and square. He had the he had correct tires um, because once we got the final benchmark, the most recent tire from American Racer checked out. So Autry deserved to win the race, and and he got the check. And and I will do the same thing if that's what it takes to make sure that the right guy takes the check home. Unfortunately, he had to get a little bit of bad press out of the deal. But I can tell you, I'm sure Scott Autry's happy that he finally got the check. So, well, I, I oh, I'm those... sure that Scott Autry, Scott Autry's happy that he got the check. But we had it. Well, just we... let me let me give you just my my negative side of this story is that after interviewing Scott Autry, Scott Autry says that he, you know, calls up Wolfpack and they call up American Racer the day before the race and and order these. Uh, new tires from American Racer the day before the race and have them next day aired to the racetrack. So it sounds to me like American Racer was playing a little bit of game with other people. So my question to you is, when is a promoter of you know some of these crown jewel events, when are you guys going to say, hey, you can run this compound from this place and it better meet this benchmark and you can run this compound from this company, and it better meet this benchmark. Well, the problem is, it, it, yeah. it, 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 I would love for it to be that simple. Trust me. I, it is I, that I went simple. through you a just big, say one tire from each manufacturer. Well, you can run a forty-six from American Racer, and you can run a sixteen hundred from Hoosier. But and you pick well, which one you can run. Well, okay. let me explain why it's not that simple, and and I'll tell you. I thought it was that simple. Obviously, I put out a, a tire rule there last year that basically said these compounds better meet bench benchmarks for American Racer. These compounds better meet benchmarks for Hoosier and, and laid it out there. The issue is 
is these tire manufacturers on both sides of the fence, okay? They constantly Not just are one or the other. Stuff. They're constantly changing stuff, constantly. Right. And it's hard to keep up with, and they're always trying to outdo the next guy. That's that's the whole reason we got white dots and but, purple yeah, dots. And I don't even know what they the got thing. anymore. That's the thing, Cody. They're constantly changing them for these traveling high-dollar teams. They're constantly changing them for them. And they're constantly well, no, actually, changing no, wait, them wait, to wait, meet wait. Those, what those guys have. Brian, Brian, that's not entirely true. Remember, we had, uh, we had, uh, what's his name? Um, I hate, I can't remember his name right now. He's passed away. Uh, Mir. Dave Mateer? Mateer. They, Mateer. They, cha- they change them. One reason they change them because of, of raw materials. And, and they change because of their, their access to those materials. So once they change it, they still have to sell the ones that they have that meet the old benchmark. That's where I think... This problem rose for you, Cody, was that they sent you the new benchmark, but he had the old tire, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to definitely get into all American racers' business because I'm not, I'm not, I'm in the business to promote races. That's right. I'm not in the business to battle tire companies on what they do. However, (laughs) right, make everybody run a 1300. (laughs) Well, say run this 1300. (laughs) I wish it was that easy. Run this tire all night. Whatever so tire, you, your whatever question, tire you qualifier on, you better start the feature on. <laughs> to answer your question, Webb, they did have a new tire, which was better. But what's going to happen if you're an American racer and you put it out there that you've got a tire that's better and you've got a warehouse full of old stuff? You're not going to sell a damn tire. We all know that. So they were getting right. tires to the right they're, people. They're, In this case, they were getting them to Scott Autry. Because they obviously felt that Scott had a chance to win the race. So they got him the right tires, not the old tires. There you go. You just answered exactly what I was just saying. Well, That's exactly exactly what I'm saying. But when I call up Hoosier and I want that tire, guess what? I get that tire, but I get that one from last year. Well, and again, I'm not in the business to fight yeah. that. I'm not, okay. And I'm not disagreeing with you, but I do know that when I put out SD44... That's SD44. I can't say it's this SD44 or this one from this month or this one from that month. It just doesn't work that way. It's impossible. You can't. A promoter can't do that. It's just it's literally impossible for someone like myself to do that and manage that situation. Well, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's move on to this year's sure. event. That would be good. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and and Cody, I don't think that Brian's after you. I think Brian Brian's got a hard on for the I'm industry. I'm after right? I'm after the whole damn industry. Cody. Yeah, he's got hard. He's got hard for this. This whole thing is a mess. Whether any of you want to realize it, it is a damn mess, and it's a damn shame that people have let let it get this way. Uh, okay, okay. Well, and and I'll I'm not gonna. I can't reference specific cases, but I can tell you this much. When I went and met with Jared Landers and Clint Boyer and Casey and all those guys up there, they complimented me on kind of opening up the suitcase to the tire game because no other promoter would have went through all the measures to discover what's going on and kind of made it known to everybody. The problem is is I was the guy that did that because now – People have questioned. They they go, well, what is what is Cody Summer really doing? And at the end of the day, if people really, really took the time to understand the situation, they'll realize, you know what, that guy was teching tires harder than anybody else, and that's why this even became an issue. And uh, you know, I'm I'm in the same game to fight this deal and try to make it right and make sure that you know competition is fair and that people aren't putting stuff on tires. That's that's what I'm all about. I, listen, I, I think you if you paid attention to what we talk about on the show if, at all, and I work with Neesmith, Smith, and I'm I'm we're against the tire doping uh, for many reasons, but keeping it fair that's the most important thing, and that's the thing that people should know about. Web, all they got to do is enforce the rules to keep it fair, and that's what Cody did. Right, and and Cody, I I compliment you on, on everything, and I'm and I'm sorry to berate you to you know when I'm, I understand that you're that you're not the enemy here. This is it's just my anger is just it's it's unbelievable. Well, well let's I see so much crap. I well, can't believe it. Well, let's talk about the crown that's coming up. The crown, the new crown jewel. It's the second year in existence, Carolina Crown, and I've been told that. 
it, Lancaster is pronounced differently than Lancaster. How do you pronounce Lancaster? I've, I've been told it's... They it's actually Lancaster. 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 Okay, so I'm going to be in Lancaster. Lancaster. <laughs> we'll be there this weekend. What can uh, what can somebody like me coming new? Um, because obviously there's going to be some fans flocking to racing. Um, what can they expect uh, from this track if they've never been there? Well, it's it's not only a different race track; it's a different atmosphere, and that's what makes this race really work and makes it exciting and makes it different. It. It's an intimidating racetrack, for one. It's got long straightaways, tight corners. Um, it's hammered down. Usually you're going to see a lot of, a lot of uh, swapping, passing. As you can see in the race last year, we had, I think, 15 different lead changes and five different leaders. So it's really up-tempo, um, and it just gets a little wild, and people get into it. And when you roll into the place, at least for the Carolina Crown, you get the feeling that you're at something really big. You know, you got people smoking, uh, you know, pigs, and they're grilling out, and they're tailgating. I mean, it's a really cool thing, and it really brings you back to the old school crown jewel type of event. You know, it gets away, you know, from the sanctioned uh, crown jewels, which I'm not knocking by any means, uh, but that's not what the Carolina Crown's about. The Carolina Crown's about getting back to the old school way of doing things and and really having some hard nosed racing, and, and that's what I think we're going to see again this year. I'm excited. I mean, it's, it, it looks like it looks like no other track I've been to. It's like a paperclip, nearly. Um, have, have you guys? Do you, have, what kind of pre registers uh, do you have? Is there? Do you, can you give us a little bit of a roll call? Yeah, I mean, we've got uh, a lot of uh, regional shoes, obviously, that are going to be attending the show. I mean, you got guys like. Chris Ferguson, Ross Bales, and, and Johnny Persley, and Dennis Rambo Franklin, and Jeff Smith, and Ricky Weeks, all your Carolina Clash, kind of B-Series, Ultimate Series guys. But then even on the national side, you've got Chris Madden, Steve Shaver, Jared Landers, Steve Francis. Uh, I think even Randy Weaver has plans to come in. So uh, Dale McDowell, uh, that's just the name of the ones off the top of my head. And I, I think we're going to have a few surprises, too that um, really are just kind of going to show up without uh, really announcing it because with everything going on that weekend, I think there's going to be a couple guys eyeing this race and going, you know, I think I have a chance at that. So, Well, your crack uh, PR man, Michael Knight, has just sent me a list, and I'll read it, and it's some of the ones you've already said, but I'll read it anyway. Uh, Jarrett Landers, Steve Francis, Scott Autry, Casey Roberts, personally, uh, Rambo, Jonathan Davport, Ricky Weeks, yep. Randy Weaver, Chris Ferguson, Ross Bales, Chris Madden, uh, Kit Quick, Zach Mitchell, Larry Trims, Dale McDowell, Kevin Wilson, Steve Schaefer, Jeff Smith, Kenny Compton, John Blankenship, just on the show last week, uh, Steve Case Bolt, Crank Bolt, uh, Billy Workman Jr., Kyle Pierce, and Tim Allen, which Tim Allen's on hold. He's, he's actually going to be on uh, on the show following you, Cody. Cody, wh- uh, is there a website for the Cal- Carolina Crown? Yeah, you can get all the information and, and the full schedule of events. We've got a lot of different things going on. We have a full you know, program of all kinds of racing going on Friday and Saturday with an open test on Thursday. Uh, all that's available at thecarolinacrown.com. That's thecarolinacrown.com. Well, Cody, I totally 100% agree with you that you went uh, the extra effort last year, and uh, I've known you for a couple years now, a uh, uh, straight shooter, uh, all my dealings with you, so... Anybody I got going one to... more question though, Webb. Real quick. Real quick. Cody, how do you feel about the one tire rule from a promoter standpoint? Uh, I or love it. Or let's the, say the... not just one tire, let's say one compound from each manufacturer. I love it. The issue is is good luck. <laughs> good luck getting <laughs> the tire manufacturers to do it because the whole reason we've gotten to have this well, many no, so compounds you... You are the promoter, because. and it, and you have the op- You have the option to make that rule. the The tire compounds are already there. It's up to you to place the the rule into effect. But my other question, then we'll leave it at that, is why do you think the guys with all the money hate that idea, and the guys that don't have any money love it? Well, I think it just depends on who you ask. I think there's some guys that have money that wouldn't mind it, but. 
you know, they're they're worried about getting beat by tires themselves. So everybody's worried about getting beat, so they, you know, naturally want to have options. And when you have one tire, you don't really have many options. So I think that's what it really boils down to is some of these guys that kind of think they've got the knowledge bucket, they've got the experience, you know, they've been on the road. I think they like the fact that they can have options and outsmart some of the competition. But, you know, in order for that to ever happen in our industry, I think you're going to need the the big touring series to implement it first, and then it'll work its way down. But a guy like me doing a one-off event, you just can't do it because you're not going to get anybody to support it. Um, It's got to work its way from the top down, unfortunately. I mean, they're the ones in power. They're the ones that have you know, the real pool on these drivers and it can really affect the industry. So I think it's got to go that way or it's not going to happen at all. Yeah. You, the influence has to be there for any kind of a uh, paradigm shift, as they say. Well, I think I, I've got to disagree with both of you. I think guys like Chris Madden will go somewhere else, but you'll still have a packed house full of good drivers. So well, but that, I think we've be- got a packed house. Already. I mean, we, we're going to have a real good show of, of a lot of great cars. And, you know, last year, we didn't need, you know, no offense, but we didn't need Scott Bloomquist. We didn't need Jimmy Owens. We didn't that's, need Scott no, O'Neill. That's and twice you know what? You, you don't, you don't need that because you got a great product with with what you guys put together. Right. Yeah, we put together a unique show, and you know, look at the Cinderella story we were able to have last year. And I think, uh, you know, I think the Carolina Crown could turn into one of those events that can continue to develop career changing victories for people. I think. You know, there, there's definitely a platform for that. I mean, you got a lot of great cars like, you know, Chris Ferguson and Ross Bales and Johnny Persley and, you know, all these guys that are regional heroes. This is their chance to really put themselves on the map. And I, that's kind of what I like about the Carolina Crown. Well, I, well we're, I'm certainly looking forward to getting there Friday night and checking everything out. And, of course, the feature on Saturday. Uh, what was the website real quick? And thank some of the sponsors. Yeah, it's thecarolinacrown.com, and, and I want to thank Dirt on Dirt. They do a great job at what they do, and I know you help support them too, Webb. And are going to be doing the Fast Dash this year, the Dirt on Dirt Fast Dash. And Arizona Sports Shirts has been a longtime supporter of mine. They, they make the best shirts in the industry. And they you can go on our Facebook page, uh, the Carolina Crown Facebook page, and you can see the T-shirts that will be available uh, trackside. They're top-notch, and, and I'm sure they won't last very long, so. All right, we're looking forward to seeing you this weekend. And, Cody, do the same thing in every race you promote. Just uh, be fair, make it fair for all the drivers, and we, I applaud you for it, brother. That's what I'm all about. Thanks for having me, guys. Cody Summer, the promoter of the uh, Carolina Crown upcoming this weekend. Let's keep moving forward in the program and bring on our next guest. He's a winner over the weekend at the Carolina Clash at Fayetteville Speedway. Tim Allen, not the comedian. But welcome to the program, brother. Sorry about holding for so long. Hey, guys. No problem. How are y'all? My co-host is cranky tonight. I'm good. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Allen, do, do, do they ever call you the tool man? Yeah, that's what they. Uh, that's what I usually hear instead of the Tim Allen. It's uh, usually the tool man. Well, you, I mean, you have to be. I mean, the PR guy for Cody, Cody Summer, and, and I talked to him on on Facebook earlier, uh, his name's Michael Knight. I mean, yeah. Knight Rider. I mean, I was like, you had to have heard that before. So you got to be Tool Man. That's not a bad nickname though in racing. No, it's not bad. It's kind of stuck with me. When I first got started uh, several years ago, uh, one of the local announcers, Dwayne Goins, is the one that uh, stuck me with this, and it's kind of taken off. Now, you guys, uh, well, we were talking about the Carolina Crown. We'll get to that in just a minute. But another track that I'm going to get to this year. Is, is that Fayetteville Speedway, and uh, you guys picked up a big win, and you guys ha- you've guys you been in a little bit of a drought. Uh, talk to us about the win over the weekend. A, a great deal. Um, a huge surprise. Um, we had uh, we had rolled out a, a brand-new Warrior race car. And you, usually, uh, I'm not the type of person to roll out a new car to a race. I usually like to shake it down and, you know, get the, get the uh, bugs worked out of it, but uh, my guys talked me into it, and we went down there and pulled us out of gear with man. It was a, a heck of a, a heck of a lift on our end because yeah, it's been a while since I've uh, I've been in victory lane with the super and it uh, gave us a good kick in the butt. 
And you guys, I mean, you beat you beat a field of cars. It wasn't like there were slouches there. Um, when you pull into a, a, a of course, your you, uh, the dirt on dirt uh, article mentioned you hadn't won in a while. So when you got there, what what when did you know that you guys had a car to beat? Well, I've, I've known when we run Carolina the other week that we had something that uh, we were going to be successful with. Uh, when we, I teamed up with Great Motorsports and they took over my engine program. I knew because uh, uh, our cars picked up actually toward the end of last year of a shop program and all, and I just needed to pick up some power. And I knew after the Carolina race that we were going to be something to deal with here these next couple weekends. And uh, you know these, these class guys, Rambo, Ricky Weeks, uh, Jeff Smith, and you know these guys are you know they're top notch racers. They've got their share of wins and. Uh, for me to outrun Rambo like that, Rambo's got top-notch equipment right now. He's been on the street. He's hard to beat, and uh, you know, just uh, it's just a great weekend. Who was the first person to the window when you guys got to victory lane? Oh gosh, uh, <laughs> one of my couple of my crew guys. Uh, as soon as I pulled off the racetrack, bombarded me, and you know, and then of course uh, we got to get across the scales. Got to win across the scales. It was just a, uh, it was a, a circus of people, and you know, just all kinds of people. You know, I've made a lot of friends in this sport, and I've also made a couple enemies, I guess. But I, I had a lot of, a lot of uh, comments from fellow drivers and crew members, and it was, uh, it was just a, a nice deal, man. Well, we talked a little bit offline uh, uh, this afternoon, uh, scheduling the uh, interview, and uh, you guys said. Uh, no, you said you you guys hadn't really thought about the crown or anything past the crown, but now you guys are you're thinking, hey, we we better show up to these races. What are your plans this weekend? Yeah, we're most definitely going to run the crown uh, for sure. Uh, yeah, Cody's got a good deal going on there, and and we need something like that in this area. And Lancaster is a a great track. Um, it's a fast track. It's a real fast track. Um, it's going to be a good deal. I think this thing is going to continue to grow, thanks to Cody. Um, but yeah, we plan on competing and competing hard. This power plant we got in this thing now, I think it's going to be Lancaster is going to be the perfect track for this for this motor we got in this thing. Now, and of course, I say Lancaster. It's, it's Lancaster, right? How you say it? Well, they say Lancaster or Lancaster. Lancaster's, but you put you've actually parked it in Victory Lane in the Super Late Model there, right? Yeah, we've been in Victor Lane there with the Clash. That was back in 2009. So uh, yeah, we, we've got a. We've got, I, I love that track. That track gets me well. The racing surface there is always immaculate. Uh, those guys do a great job uh, prepping that track there, and it's very seldom you have any issues with the uh, track surface there. Now, this uh, with this motor and stuff you guys got, and 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 this is a this is a crown jewel basically. What would it mean for the rest of your uh, uh, racing season to win a big race like the Carolina Crown? Oh, it'd be phenomenal. Um, we were talking about that uh, on the way home from Fayetteville the other night. Uh, <laughs> oh, so you guys didn't wait till you got to the shop? You were already talking about it? Oh yeah, yeah. We were. I, I, I've got something. I think that's uh, you know we, we could we uh, we everything hits just right. I've got something that uh, I think can do it. Um, you know, you need a little bit of luck in there, too, and that's something that I haven't had the past couple of years, and it's got to turn around sometime, and, uh, you know, we're, we're just feeling good about everything. I think uh, if I could pull out something like this, it would, uh, I don't know, it, I'm speechless on that because it just, uh, it'd, it'd be totally amazing, but I do think, uh, I do think we would, we stand a decent chance. Now, do you know, do you know uh, Scott Autry very well? Yeah, I know Scott a, a lot. Scott was one of the first ones at my trailer when I got out of my car the other night. Ah, so I mean, what, last year when you heard when you heard he'd won, I mean, what did that? How did that affect the racing community? And I don't want to use terms like the you know the the little guy or the big guy, but how did it affect the the the, the regional um, racing community to know that one of their own had took that money home and not one of the guys you know coming in to 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 steal it from y'all? Uh. It meant a lot. Um, Scott winning that race. Uh, it, it just that race there, man, is an endurance race on that track, and you have got to save your stuff. You got to be there at the end. Uh, you got to be smart. You know, me and Scott started on the uh, on the same road, far, far, way back in the back. 
Huh. And uh, we were talking before the race, and he made the comment to me. He says, tool man, he says, look up there. He said, we got a long way to go. He said, I'm just going to sit here, ride, and be patient, and let things sort out, and see where I'm at at the end. Now look, you know, previous well, you might, Yeah, you might have threw a chain onto that back of his car. Well, I would have, but I fell out a lot of it. <laughs> got you. Well, all right. Well, we certainly appreciate taking your time uh, to come on the show tonight. Um, I'm going to come. I'll be at the Carolina Crown Coven for DirtOnDirt.com. So everybody listening, you can catch all the uh, highlights. You know, if you're not going to be able to make it to Lancaster, South Carolina, you'll be able to catch everything on Dirt on Dirt. Um, before we let you get out of here, man, I want you to thank some of the sponsors on that car to help park it in Victory Lane, and also the crew members that turned the bolts on that thing, and and also the the guys that came to the window that said thank you. Yeah, um, I appreciate y'all having me, man. Uh, yeah, I'd most definitely like to start off by thanking my father. He's a, he's my right-hand man in this whole deal. We've been doing it here for several years, and uh, he uh, I think it's gave him a, a kick in the rear end, too, kind of lightened him up a little bit, so we'll give him a little morale. And, but it wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for uh, Jonathan Gray and Gray Motorsports, those guys over there at Rad Thrower and those guys in their engine shop. You know, they're, they're, their specialty is building drag race motors, and, they built me one heck of a circle track motor now. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, Franklin Signs, Jay Stevens at Air Speed, uh, some local local people here, Jerry and Carol, who uh, they contribute to our program some, and of course all my crew guys. Uh, I got me a nice young bunch now. They're, uh, they're great guys. They're enthusiastic. Um, they mean everything to me. If it wasn't for them, I couldn't do it. I'd also like to thank uh, another guy that's been in the uh, a big involvement with turning my program around is Chris Ferguson's dad, Brian Connor. Uh, he, me and him worked a whole lot together last year. Chris has got a warrior. And Brian, uh, me and him got together on some of the shock stuff, and he was the one that helped me turn my shock program around. And that really, I picked up our car. And uh, last but not least, I'd like to thank Spud at American Racer. And uh, those guys have been great to me. But uh, you're right, y'all guys are right about the tire deal. It is to be, right now, it, you know, it, it's a mess, and it's, it's just, it's, just hurting dirt late model racing. I was going to ask you, and I knew I know Brian was wanting to ask you, but what? I mean, you've been around the sport a little bit. What What do you think we need to do to get the the tire deal under control? You know, I don't know. I really do not know. It is it's such a mess now. I thought I knew at one time. Um, I really don't know. You know, y'all guys talked about the single compound deal and. I remember, you know, back when the Colossal first started years ago at, at Lowe's, they were, what, on a, like a, uh, a one compound deal. And, you know, then you had to start watching some of the tire manufacturers that were putting out, say, for example, a 55 tire, stamping it a 55, and then you've got a, a 1350 compound. But that uh, don't happen, Tim. That's what they say. They say that never happened. But now you're another person I, that that knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, so all you what? guys out there telling me I'm full of crap. Guess what? Tim Allen just called it out too. Tell him he's full of crap. No. Tell yeah. all the other people that have said that that they're full of crap. We it, all know what goes on. It do, do the do and this is just a question. I'm just that do the tire companies. And I know Brian, what you're going to answer. I'm going to ask. I'm going to Tim. Do the tire companies yeah, they ha- do they have too much control with what goes on? Because they're they th- there's no competition for Hoosier, uh, really, or American Race. I mean, they can they do what they want to. I guess is, is that scare you as a customer? Yeah, it does. I mean, it, it, it's it's uh, it's you know it's hurting us right now. These the, the expense of these tires and you know the, the expense I got to go through this weekend with you know with three different compounds and. It's uh, it's tough. I mean, it's really tough, and it's tough for us to try to compete. Like you know, I want to go to the World Outlaw Race out there in Fayetteville. Uh, you know, when, when they run it here in a couple of weeks, and it's gonna make it real tough on us because you know we've got a small budget, but to go out there, you're gonna have to really gear up on the on tires to run with those guys. So, and so it's almost a deterrent. It's almost so you almost feel like it's something that keeps you away from the big shows is. Is uh and and that Brian is where you're saying that it's right the, and and just like the just like the Lucas Oil thing Lucas has got their their what six compounds that you're allowed to run in the series when Bloomer gets tired of getting beat 
the Hoosier man's going to make him a tire to win, regardless of Richie Lewis or whoever is in is head of control of that. Um, so, Tim, what do you think? I mean, me and Jim Moon talked about it, and, and we say you pick, like, a soft tire, like a 1,200, a 1,300, that kind of compound, not necessarily a Hoosier tire, but something soft like that, and you say, guess what, guys? If you qualify on this tire, you're going to run the whole damn heat race on this tire, and then you're going to start the feature on this tire, and if you want to change it, you can change it after you take the green flag in the feature. And you can go to the tail. Yeah, that'll most definitely cut the expense down. We've done that back when I first started running the Clash. Um, that's what they done. They marked the tires that we qualified on, and we had to run them in the feature. And, and you know, we saved a ton of money uh, doing it that way. Uh, for a budget racer, yeah, I'm all I'm, I'm for something like that. But uh, you no, know, it's. Uh, I think what it takes is that it takes a promoter to actually stand behind it and do it. And not wuss out because some of these big tour guys say, hey, we ain't doing that. We're not going to do that. You know what? If there's a $50,000 payday somewhere and all they have to do is run one tire, they're coming. They're coming. I promise you they're coming. I'm sure they're going to be there. That's right. And they'll they'll piss and moan and complain, but they're going to be there. (laughs) (laughs) Well... It's uh, that the whole tire thing's crazy. I mean, it's it's just uh, and sometimes our, our our sport is like no other. Where I I don't know, it, I I just don't get sometimes our sport. But it it is that's what makes it so much fun. We talk about it, have something to talk about on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, and then we go to the races on Saturday, and we all go back. No matter how, how many times we have, I ain't going back there ever again. And man, you might hold. You might hold to that, hold to that, Brian. You didn't go back, back to Brush Creek, but well, I didn't right. go back to Brush Creek because I was insulted. <laughs> and there's a difference. There's a difference, Webb, when somebody you know insults you, and you walk away and you say, "Screw you! I ain't coming back here." <laughs> I didn't say I'm not coming back here because I didn't like this racetrack. I was pissed off at a particular person. And when I tell you something, damn it, I mean it. It's going to happen. <laughs> if I tell you, Webb, I'm going to kick your ass, you better be looking over your shoulder because the ass whooping is coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that being said, Tim, I certainly appreciate you guys taking time out of your evening to come talk about your win at Fayetteville. Looking forward to seeing you at the Carolina Crown next week, and hopefully you can repeat what Autry did, minus all the controversy, and take home that big check. Yeah, I hope so, too. It would be a, a great feat, and uh, uh, you would hear about it if I do it. I can tell you that. Just well, I'm going to have, about it. I'm gonna have my video camera right in your face when, in victory lane if you do it, so you, we'll see each other. <laughs> that sounds fine. All right, Tim Allen, the tool man. He's a big winner over the weekend at Fayetteville Speedway in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and he'll be heading to the, taking the momentum to the Carolina Crown. Make sure that you call American Racer and get those latest tires, Tim. (laughs) (laughs) You you, you might want to send a sample to the lab after you get them just so that they have the right one. Make (laughs) make sure Spud hooks you up. Yeah, Spud will hook me up. All right, well, take care. Be careful. All right, y'all guys, thank you. Hollywood. Hollywood, let let me do this again. Let me do this again. Because you were you were on fire. Let's just do this again real quick. That's, I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you, I got I got sweat on my forehead. It probably doesn't help that I'm wearing a beanie hat with the headphones on, but you know, whichever, whichever. I, I'm passionate about this, Web. Oh, no, I try, I, I'm with you, brother. I'm with you. And and I can't. And I, I mean, I'm almost speechless at some at times. 
and, and the Lucas Oil thing has got me just just completely devastated. That's an, that's another thing. The the six tires, whatever. I can't even run those six tires anywhere else. They're not going to work at Moeller. I mean, that's where I'm going to go race is at Moeller and at Florence. Half of them I ain't going to be able to run at Florence. I mean, before I was able to go, and, and I want to get, you know what? And it's not about going out there, and nobody goes out there to run last. Don't don't get me wrong on that. But but I enjoy going out and trying to compete with those guys, and they've taken that away. It's like they've taken something away from me. I mean, the the passion is overflowing this evening. And that's fine. Yeah. I get it. I mean, that's but that's and that's then what and then I'm stuck. I'm stuck again. Because if I'm going to go over to Moeller's and run, I'm going to have to have UMP tires. But guess what? Those UMP tires are going to suck anywhere else. I'm going to try to go to Twin Cities and race on some tires that I want to go to Eldora and run on. And that's what I used to love to do. I used to love to go to all these racetracks and meet and meet all the different people. And that, that was just what we did. I don't like points racing. So they, they've destroyed my dream. Well, uh, they've taken that's, my happiness. Well, that, that's what I said. Is sometimes we have to modify what our expectations are in our dreams and go from there. Yeah, I just don't like to modify my plan. So, you know what I'm going to do? I guess I'm just going to run whatever tires I feel like running. And since they don't check anyway, well, I'll be good. <laughs> Some 75R, 275s? Whichever, you know. Make sure you get the white white letter Michelin's. Yeah, the, the white dot thin rib narrow wall super traction tire. Make sure to say Mickey Thompson. What is it? The, the special, the special Lucas. You call call up Hoosier. Yeah, I need a Lucas one two three fours and fives. Well, do you want the special fives or do you want the secret fives? <laughs> now I do um, remember. I do remember somebody telling me a story of somewhere down the line. I can't remember who it was, but. That 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 some of these guys do have like they have like numbers from tires past or whatever that they if they have any ex, ha, hey do you have any of uh, the Hoosier one three seven eight nine two A ones I've heard that before but I don't know right what, and they do and that and that's that's probably one of them compounds this is that they made from whatever year you know and that goes back to what the Matier was talking about. Um, but but what I want that are but, available, but and I, wanna, I get that sometimes that stuff is better than others. But I'm telling you. But what I want to know is 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 does the are somebody is somebody like you or somebody like I got a buddy here uh, in town local here uh, Jason Moore's uh, hard racer. He's at limited late models and uh, different classes. But could you or Jason Moore's call? Do you have the same information to call up and ask for those same kind of special compounds? Right. Well, see, that's something that you've acquired over the over your years and experience of racing. You've cataloged what you've done. That's and, right, okay. and that's your that's your thing. I, and I'm not saying I'm not saying. Then when there's I think... the then there's the other thing like this, and we'll use American Racer as the example, and Scott Altry from last year. Altry has you know his little crew because you know he paid those guys. He pays those guys to help him get those little advantages. There's lots of people. I'm not going to promote who they are, but they pay them big money every year to share information with them, and they also get out of that deal their little connections. It's all it's all part of the being in the group, Web. You know, you got to, all right, we're going to call this guy. We're going to call him the day before, and there's this new tire, and they know what's been going on down here with this racetrack, and we think this is going to be better. So we're going to give it to you. And then they forget, oh, crap, um, they're going to test those tires, you know, because the tire testing thing is fairly new, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, somebody forgot that they still tested tires and didn't think, oh, well, those idiots over there in Carolina, they're not going to test anybody's tires. <laughs> is there another group we can try to piss off tonight? <laughs> Okay, what does um, I got a question here? Wait a second, I'm waiting on an answer. Hang on a second. Well, somebody said I'll something. give you an answer. What's the question? Well, okay, yeah, okay, I can ask you. Uh, what is rebranded tires? Rebranded? Yeah. 
I would say that's probably a tire that come from Hoosier, and they put like a uh, no name Diablo secondary tire on it or something. El Diablo seventy two. Yeah, and these are these are El De Pasos. Or huh. Who knows? Is that something that takes place? Rebranded tires? I think they did stuff like that, you know, years ago. They do it in oh, off road okay. racing. Okay. Well, I, I, you like, know, like I don't Mickey Tom- like the Mickey Thompson and what's the other one? Um, it's it has a name. It, it was uh, the people that took over Mickey. Oh, Thompson. okay. No. They do it there. Well, also, I don't know t- if it happens too. I don't know if it happens too much in what we do because it's kind of hard to even find. It's kind of hard to find people that will even make the tire. But I'm sure that Hoosiers probably stamped Goodyear on something. Well, I don't know. That's speculation. We can't accuse them of that. I'm not accusing them. I'm just saying I'm sure they probably have at some point or, or another at some series that mandated this certain tire. I'm sure that. <laughs> well, I don't. We don't, whatever, know, we, we, don't, we don't. We don't know. We don't, we don't know that. Now this this fellow here was saying that a 1450 might have a 55 on it. I've heard of that. I've I'll tell you it. this. Oh yeah. Yeah, that happened. But see, that comes from the tire manufacturers. Remember, that's well, I, what Tim Allen was just talking about. Uh, see, that's, that's what, so crazy he, that's what he was just talking about. And and they act like we're stupid, and we don't know that they do that for people. <laughs> they act like we're stupid, and we don't know that certain guys get tires that are an inch and three quarters wider than everybody else. <laughs> well, don't you have you have that tire, don't you? Oh, I still got that bastard. It's going to be in my garage <laughs> forever. <laughs> well, all right. Well, we have uh, we have reached the end of the program. Uh, and like, one day I hope to be able to to lay that on the desk of somebody at Hoosier Tire and say, "Do you guys still make these?" <laughs> oh goodness gracious! Well, I know that we, you once did. Maybe Goodyear had made that one and put Hoosier on it. I'm telling you right now. You you watch. So eventually, it's all going to come out. Uh, tire gate busted wide open. Oh, uh, we we've been past that, and I don't know what else there. I mean, there's no other rules. There's there's no other rules that you can worry about. I mean, unless guys are running 15 shots on their car, I don't know if that's legal or not. I don't even know if it would help. You know, Brian, Brian last you know, right, the season's been slow to start, and and. I've had concerns that the show's been boring, maybe uh, not as exciting as it usually is because the racing hasn't started yet. I no longer have those concerns. It was very interesting tonight. It's start. It's starting. <laughs> it's starting. We're we're getting back in our little groove. Before we get out but of here, there, want, it, hey, Web, those those are tire companies. Those are the biggest biggest groups of people in our sport. They're they're e- they're easy targets. It's the rubber mafia. It's, yeah, it's like hitting a billboard with a twenty two rifle. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to thank all the guests that came on tonight. I'd like to thank Mr. Kennedy, John Kennedy, coming on from Kennedy Motorsports pr- to promote the NDRL that's upcoming. Should be a pretty good series. Also, I'd like to thank Cody McCarver. He is the uh, author and singer of Let's Get Dirty. He will be in attendance there, putting on a free show. I didn't know he played for Confederate Railroad. Uh, Pretty sure he likes his women on the trashy side. Uh Pretty sure. Pretty sure. Love that song. I also like to thank Bobby Pierce for joining us. That was a great one of our better interviews. We've had we've had two really good interviews the past couple weeks. Blankenship last week, very candid, and then Bobby this week, who said he will put a chrome bumper to you, Scott Bloomquist. Hang on a second. All right, we had to do. You said Scott Blunk was like twenty five times earlier, and I couldn't play it that much. Well, it, that's it. that's every everybody knows who who the Bloomer is. I'd like to thank Cody Summer for coming on, and uh, thank him especially for big, uh, keeping things fair over there for the Carolina Crown. Big event for the Carolinas, Crown Jewel. Big, 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 big money to win over there. I'm excited to go to the racetrack. It's a, it's a, definitely a different. Sorry, Cody, for beating you up. No. I, know, I, I, I didn't beat listen. him up too bad. I wasn't directing it at him. No, I don't, I don't think you were. I did. I wasn't going to bring up that part of last year, but he, he brought it up. 
So I mean, I was going to give him his his stage, and uh, and I, I think it's better for a promoter to talk about that kind of stuff out loud to put the racers at ease because you know how it goes. If he, if 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 Dave Matier never said anything, if Cody Summer had never said anything, well, he don't get to say anything now. Well, that's rest his soul. But yeah. when you don't say anything, then you leave it up to the racers to decide in their own mind what's going on. But by coming out and defending everything he did based on the information he had, and then change it back to what was right, then you make the racers say, "Hey, I'm going to go race with this guy because I know." He's going to go to every extent possible to make make sure that it's a fair deal, and that's what that's what Cody did. So I'm, that's cool. I'm impressed with Cody. Any closing yeah, thoughts? Yeah, he Brian? definitely he definitely worked his tail off on that one. That's right. Any closing thoughts, Brian Gray? Uh, hey, we finished up some of them uh, carbon fiber wheel covers this week, and they look super cool. I need to. Oh, okay. I got it. I got to get some of them out there. I'm actually, I am. I'm going to take. I'm going to take a bunch of them over to L and M Performance this week. So, uh, if any of you guys want them wheel covers, they're going to be on the shelves at L and M. I guarantee you, Webb, they're so cool looking. They'll be gone quick. Well, I will certainly. And and the, the website's supposed to be done sometime. I know. I keep saying that. We'll we'll, we'll set something up where you can uh, get them on the website. Um. And just to prove that it, it is under construction, you can go to IntheDirtRadio.com. And uh, i got to get my boy, the, the, my guy, to finish it. And I've got some I got some good news, too. And I'll have to share this with you off the air. But you know Avid came out with a new uh, webcast. Um, I'm going to have to show you. Really? You're going to like it. Oh, yeah, you're going to like it. You're going to like it big time. I need to check that out. Well, all right, well, for yep. all my guests, and uh, my uh, my volcano field uh, passionate racer Brian Gray. Thank you all for listening, and we'll be back next week. Guess what? Next week, next week, I'm pretty sure we're going to have Austin Hubbard on. You've been listening in the dirt.